Okay. Hey guys, I'm sitting here with Kevin Wynn from Empire Mortgage Group, and we're not going to waste any more time with introductions. We're going to get right to some of the hard facts and uh, discussions that are happening right now. So Kev, big program out there right now is a conversation around the deferred mortgage payments. And I think most people feel that's pretty vague. So tell us some of the scenarios you've seen unfold. Uh, we know there's not certainty there yet, but what are some of the situations you're seeing? Uh, thanks for having me on the program here, Derek. So deferral has been a very hot topic. Um, it is getting approved on a case-by-case -case basis. We do have a whole list of contact hotline numbers for those who are interested, please reach out directly. But a couple of scenarios that we've seen is uh, one that's very common and uh, a lot of our clients are going through right now. It's just, uh, it's a six month deferral, right? And your principal will stay stagnant through the six months. The interest in the property taxes is being capped into the mortgage and your amortization is not being extended. So that what that means is that your payments would slowly in, will increase over the span of your mortgage, but your term will not be incre uh, increased and also your credit will not be affected, right? So on average that we're seeing an increase from 10 to $20 a month over the term um, and yeah. the payments being capped in. So that's one of the more common ones. Uh, we've also seen uh, the interest of being accrued still uh, and the principal not being Paid and being held off until the end of the six month deferral. And then that amount is being forced to be paid back to. So there's a couple of scenarios. It's uh, like I said, it's uh, it is on a case by case basis. And, uh, but feel free to reach out. We'll put you in touch with the right people to give you that information. Sounds good. Yeah. It sounds like a lot of different lenders are still sort of working out the overall plans associated with these, but as it unfolds guys, uh, count on Kev as a resource to keep you guys educated on this. Some other things happening right now, Kevin, we're hearing, uh, I'm seeing a lot of chatter about the opportunities for refinances or setting up home equity line of credits. And you know, what sort of opportunity does that create and what's your opinion on that? That's a great question, Derek. So home equity line of credits uh, have always been used as a very powerful investment vehicle for us, right? And what we've seen lately is that we've, all, we've really, trying to educate our clients to use the equity as a form of security. Um, who knows what's going to happen, you know what I mean, like two or three months from now or even a year from now, right? So uh, as of right now, from studies showing that the vaccine is still pretty far away to uh, helping the general public out, right? So for us, like uh, cash flow is always huge. Um, having liquidity, having if you're sitting on equity and you're getting laid off, or if you're not being able to make payments, what's the point of sitting on equity, right? So we're securing home equity lines of credits and, or we're refinancing to make sure that we have access to capital and staying liquid in case anything happens. If this is a full on you know, pandemic that lasts for longer than all of us anticipate, it's nice to have access to, access to that capital, right? And on top, yeah, on top of that is, yeah, sorry, Derek, go ahead. Sorry, and things can change too in the situation where, you know, if the impact to this from all of this hurts the real estate market, it could lower prices. It could impact what your home might even qualify for from an appraisal standpoint. Uh, you could lose your job and hurt your, your ability to qualify. So we're sort of in this unique time period where you can capture the high prices, low rates, and, you know, hopefully while well, you still have your job. No, I, I totally agree, right? So if you're using, uh, if you're going through an appraisal and you're using comparables from the last six months or so, uh, we were at a pinnacle in house prices. So you're going to get a very fair valuation for your property, right? And in combination with the low interest rates, you're going to be actual to maximize the amount of equity that you can take out when it comes to a refinance right now. Pair that with the ample opportunity with, we've seen a lot of more inventory come, coming out in the real estate market. It is an amazing time to get into the real estate market if you can withhold that risk, right? So... Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that's the, that's a big, that's a big question that we ask all of our clients. It, it's like, if you're able to withhold that risk and if you're, if you're, able, if you are able to take advantage of that opportunity of this opportunity, then you can make a lot of money. You can purchase a lot of properties at a very good value right now. Yeah. It creates a unique opportunity and, you know, in these up, you know, uncertain times or there's opportunity, as you said, for people who can stomach that risk. 
Um, it's that classic risk versus reward. So, you know, make sure you know what you're signing up for if we're getting into that territory. But it's certainly the, the home equity line of credits and the refis and the position the market's in right now definitely leaves a lot of room for opportunity if you're the type of person who's, you know, out there seeking for it. Um, another yeah, thing I want to, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and just and something to add on with like the, the, the low interest rates right now. What we're going to do is that we're, we're slowly reaching out to all of our clients who have a fairly higher interest rate uh, when they first registered. And we're just calculating the breakage costs and the opportunity costs to see if it makes sense for them to break their mortgage early and align themselves with a lower interest rate. Right. So what this does is that uh, it allows for a lower monthly payment and increase in affordability if they're looking to buy potentially an investment property, right? Yeah, awesome, awesome. Now, another thing I just wanted to sort of bring to light and, and more so get people thinking about ahead of the curve here is with some of these layoffs occurring and people going on EI, uh, this could be happening for people who might be uh, pending sales. So, you know, it's an industry talk. So they might have purchased and waiting to close their real estate transaction and getting laid off in the meantime. So. What sort of support has the government put in place, if any, and you know, how are some people mitigating that change? Yeah, so we are working tirelessly with our lending partners to come up with a solution for this. We've seen over 500,000 individuals applying for EI alone in the past week and a half, right? Yeah. So, uh, like, so what are measures that these lending these lenders and banks are going to be put in place in order to qualify these clients who have bought a property? and are looking to close in the near future, right? So, uh, so we're still ironing out all those details, but uh, I know that uh, lending guidelines are going to be a little bit easier. We've already seen certain banks decreasing their qualifying uh, uh, interest rates from 5.19 to 5.04. So that helps a little bit. I think more, I think major, major changes has to be put in place uh, as we see more layoffs and see more business being shut down, right? But uh, we're still waiting some more results as they roll out. Yeah, especially with yesterday's announcement of uh, mandatory closures by midnight tonight for non-essential businesses, we would likely see a bit more. Although it was a very uh, long list of essential businesses. <laughs> right. Um, so, you know, people are still definitely at work, but it's going to have its impacts. Um, we told you guys to keep this short and sweet and right to the facts. So we're going to wrap it up there. And if you guys have follow-up questions, reach out to Kev or I uh, individually, and we'll get you guys the answers. But Kevin, thanks for uh, joining on this uh, impromptu uh, information session. And hopefully we're getting people some of the answers they might be wondering right now. Thank you so much, Derek. Have yourself an uh, awesome day, buddy. Stay, stay well. Take care, everyone. You too.